Good morning. Uh, I hope you're having a great day. Today's video is going to be on the Bend and Snap Clutch by Lens Handmade. She's given me permissions to, permission to do her patterns as long as obviously we don't share any details on the pattern pieces or the measurements. But this is absolutely a very cute little uh, crossbody bag. I have made one. This was my tester bag. So this is just out of uh, ostrich vinyl. So it's got a front zipper pocket, which is actually pretty roomy there. And then there's the back, a plain back. You could certainly put another zipper pocket there if you'd like. And then on the inside, there are two zipper pockets. There's a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six card slots with a snap to hold those in place. Again, two zipper pockets, an ID holder, and then it closes with two magnetic snaps. This one, I just actually made a shoulder strap, uh, but it also has a hand carrying strap. So if you didn't want this, this next one, I'm gonna make the, the handle removable and I'm gonna make it a crossbody. But for this one, it, it's uh, just a shoulder strap with an additional hand handheld strap. But very cute, uh, actually will hold quite a bit. If you're one of those minimal, minimalist bag carriers, this would be a perfect bag for you. So again, this is the Ostrich Vinyl in Tan. And then today, I am, for the handle, I'm gonna be using webbing, some black three quarter inch webbing. So all my hardware is gonna be uh, gunmetal and it is going to be three quarter inch. So I have uh, two quarter inch uh, swivel clips. I have a slide adjuster for the uh, handle or for the crossbody strap. And then I have two D-rings to put on the top of the bag that will hold the swivel clasps. And then I have <clears throat> two magnetic snaps in, gu in gun metal. And then I have for the credit card uh, strap that holds those in place, I just have a black uh, snap that I'll put on. So that's all the hardware. And there, there are some rivets, so I have some gun metal rivets as well. So that's all the hardware. Let's just review the pieces. For my credit card slots, I am gonna be using um, landscaping fabric. I've talked about that in some of my other videos. You certainly don't have to use landscaping fabric. You could use a thin cotton, just as long as you uh, pink shear the sides of the cotton so it doesn't fray. Some people use a really thin ribbon, but it's whatever you choose. The reason I really like this, it's very thin and it is very sturdy. It doesn't stretch at all, and it doesn't fray. So that's what I'll be using for my card slots. This is the uh, snap tab for holding the credit card slots, and this is where I'll put my um, little snap on that end. This is the handle that goes on the top, and I am using black, gorgeous, black and silver cork today. It's just really stunning. So what I did was I put a, um, I divided this piece in half and put a piece of tape in the middle. And then when we're ready, we'll fold that in half and that'll be our candle for the top. I have three zippers with gunmetal um, zipper tape and gunmetal hardware. The sizes for all those are in the pattern. Um, I did go ahead on all my zippers, uh, put a just a tiny little um, mark for all the, the middles of the zippers. And then here is my credit card or ID holder, whichever you choose to use it for. Um, with my plastic, I just have it taped to the back. I haven't sewn it yet. But I also did put just a tiny little mark for the middle for that one. And then these are all the innards of my zipper pockets, which I did also mark the middle on all of those. You'll need four larger ones. I did interface those with woven interfacing. 
And then for the outside pocket, they're a little bit smaller and I also uh, marked the middles and put some woven interfacing. And then for the outside, I used, again, the, the cork. I already put my name tag on. This is uh, optional, obviously. And then the outside calls for a zipper facing. I think that's actually hard for you to see. There, you can see it, because it's in the same material as the cork, which I actually like. Um, so we'll be putting, this is the outside zipper pocket. I didn't uh, put it all the way on yet, but most of it is on, um, and it's just in the middle, and it gives you the uh, measurement in the pattern. But again, make sure you mark all your centers on all four sides of these large pieces. So that's the outer piece. This is the inner piece that has the credit card um, slots and then uh, a spot for the snap. And then I have not yet cut the zipper zippers for that um, until I finish the card slots. Uh, she mentions in the um, pattern not to cut these until you're done with the credit card uh, slots because it does make the piece pretty floppy and it's just easier to do this before cutting your holes for the zippers. So that's that. So that is all our pieces and so uh, we will all get ready and we'll get started. I am using my fabricator today and I am using black thread. So again, we're making the Bend and Snap Clutch by Lynn's Handmade. All right, let's get started. First, I am gonna do my strap. This is a uh, three quarter inch webbing. And I did burn the ends. Burn the ends pretty good because webbing does fray a little bit. I am gonna, I have a three quarter inch slider. So I am putting it on with the, you can see on the, slider there is a right side and a wrong side so i'm going to put it up and over and then i'm going to pull it down about an inch or so maybe a little more than an inch and i'm going to clip that and then you know there's a lot of uh, comments out there in the bag making world about whether you put a rivet here or whether you just sew it um, I like to try and make, obviously, my bags to last a very long time. Um, so if you put a rivet in here, a hole, then that area around that hole can fray. Of course, you can use fray check, you can burn it. Um, there's a variety of things you can do. I just don't think it's necessary to put a ribbon in there. So I just um, am going to sew a couple lines of stitches just to secure it rather than use a ribbon. So I always sew these from the top in case my bobbin, I'm going to do about a three on this, uh, acts up, which it shouldn't, but just in case. And I go back and forth just two or three times, doing a good back stitching. Then I'm going to cut those threads. You can certainly do a box. A lot of people do use the box method. Oh dear, I just spilled all my clips. Um, you could certainly do a box method. Um, I think it's really hard to get that box method, the method looking decent. So I'll just do a couple straight lines. And then I'll go as close to this slider as I can get. And I'll just say on that box method, I'm sure there are people that are masters at it. I am not. I never have been. I have uh, tried for years. And so that's just one thing that I can't get to look decent. And I don't like to have things on my bags that don't look decent, so mm -hmm. I don't do it. I'd rather just do the straight top stitching. 
and then you burn any little uh, ends of your thread so they don't come up, start coming apart. And then I always, again, will burn the end of that webbing that's right there. So there you have it. Two lines of stitching. So that secures the uh, slider. So now, and make sure you get things straight. So I just hold the, with the wrong side up and I pull it all the way down. Then I will put my first slider on with a slider going to the top of this piece. And I will pull it all the way just so I'm sure I've got it on there straight. And then I will pull that through one end of the slider and back through the other end of the slider. Again, just double check that you've got that on there. So there's the top of my slider and my first swivel clasp is on there. So then there's no sewing for that one. And then now we need to secure this swivel clasp. Again, I'll pull about an inch, inch and a half. Again, before I sew anything on this, I will just make sure it's straight. So there's the top side, and there's the top side of my swivel. All right, again, so I'm just gonna do two lines of stitching here. Again, I'll do it from the top so I can make sure that it looks pretty. And then I'll get as close to that swivel clasp as I can. All right, then I'm just going to burn on my threads. And I'll burn the end of that again real quick. All right, so there we have our crossbody strap with a uh, swivel clasp. And um, this is really nice because these um, sliders work really good. I can't remember where I got this particular hardware, um, but there's lots of places out there to get good um, variety of colors of hardware. All right, so that is done. So we will put that aside for now. I think the next thing I'm gonna do is just do this outside zipper facing. So I'm just gonna, and I just put a cute little um, woven label under here. It says, treat yourself, treat yourself. <laughs> I don't know if you've, uh, any of you have, uh, are familiar with uh, Lauren Marmino, but she and some of her bag making friends have started the sewing blurbs. So this was part of the first set just as cute as can be. All right, so we're gonna sew around. I'm gonna start over here. We're gonna start uh, sew around about an, as close, probably an eighth of an inch or so, around the outside of the zipper facing. And I am, for this one, gonna not back stitch. I'm gonna pull my um, threads to the back. And I'm gonna do about a four. And this zipper facing happens to have some curves. So just go slow so that it looks decent because it's very visible. Although this is black on black, so it's not gonna be as visible. If I, if I was using like a white on this or even a silver, it would look very visible. Again, for where this goes on the pattern, she gives you those measurements. I mean, on the piece, she gives you the measurements. This is the outer piece.
my stiletto and pull that to the back. Hold on to my threads, leave them long enough so you can tie them off. And then pull that one to the back. It's black on black maybe wasn't a good idea. It's hard to see. All right, so there we have it on the front sewn around the outer edge, and that's what it looks like on the back. I'm gonna tie those threads off and just give them a little burn so that they stay in place. I am using polyester thread, polyester nylon thread today from Size Wax. Now see, I did not leave one of those long enough. It's gonna be annoying. All right, it's doable. Just take me a minute. Okay. Yeah, just give that a little tiny burn here. All right, cute. So this is a good place. It, I mean, this gives this little bag a pop of color on the outside. You certainly don't have to do that. So now what I'm gonna do is cut this hole. And I am going to use my little knife here just to get it started. Just right down the middle. Mm. Need to change my blade. That's bad. I'm gonna put that over there so I can remember to change my blade. All right. Now I'm just gonna. When you cut this, I'm gonna just cut a little more down the middle. Um, just be careful not to cut into your facing. Ugh. I'm having some issues with scissors today. Scissors and knives. There we go. So you just cut about an eighth or a little more around where you just did your stitching. And I put my piece of tape there so it's giving me a little bit of fits. And take your time on this because, especially if you're using an expensive material like cork, you don't want to have to cut a new piece of anything. And you can ask me how I know. I've done it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure every bag maker out there has done that at some point, or you will at some point in your career, I hate to tell you. All right, now it's funny because I never cut this, uh, I'm just gonna leave it there. All right, let's put this cleaned up here. So there we have the hole with our, for our zipper pocket that's on the outside and it'll actually look like this. And I am using that white zipper. So let me find one of the zippers. So it'll end up looking like this. Isn't that cute? My zipper, white zipper tape. I was I would have used silver zipper tape, but I didn't have uh, enough, or I didn't have gunmetal hardware. But if you that would be cute on this. All right, so that is done. That outer piece is done. 
I think what I'm going to do next is do the card slots. Grab my, and this, if you've watched any of my other videos, her card, slat, card slots are done the same way. It is uh, a very great way to do it, really. All right, so I did put uh, tape under each slot. And then there's one down here and there's one up here, which she gives you the measurements for. And then this is about two and a half inch um, piece of uh, landscaping fabric. And then I do have five additional pieces uh, that I've cut over here of the double-sided tape. You can't see it, it's off camera. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take this one off the, the first, underneath the first card slot. And you know what I'm gonna do first? I am gonna put that um, portion of the snap in here. That way, I mean, in her video, she does it after she gets these on here. I just think it's a little harder to do. And for my purposes, doing it now is not a problem at all. So, I am gonna use a little piece of Decaville Heavy just to give it a little more um, durability and it's, uh, Again, just a plastic. This is the piece that's gonna go on the back. And these are very sharp, so be careful. I guess that's a good thing, man. Okay. Then I'm gonna put the female piece here on the bottom of this and the, the male piece will go on the actual tab. Let me grab my um, little tool. This is just a, again, I've said this many times, but it's a tool I get from Cam Snaps. And this is a challenge to get in here, but this cork is pretty pliable. Okay. So there we have our snap. Okay, I just wanted to test that, make sure. So that's what it looks like from the back. And because it's black, it's hard to see. I should probably think about that when I do a, my next tutorial, not use black fabric. Okay. So again, we're going to start with the landscaping fabric underneath the bottom, the first bottom card slot, and the fabric is going up. And we're gonna turn it to the right side. And I'm gonna do about a three and a half for this. Uh, and we're gonna stitch just under that first card slot. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. You can um, not back stitch and pull all your threads to the back. I will tell you, if you use landscaping fabric, that's not a good idea because you will not be able to burn anything in the back. If you put a, a, a light or a flame next to this landscaping fabric, it will light on fire. Again, don't ask me how I know that. So I'm just gonna, I'm using black thread on black cork, so I am gonna do just a couple back stitches. It'll be fine. And I will be able to burn my threads on the front because it's not touching the landscaping fabric. Okay, so there you have that on the, the first line underneath that first card slot. So next, that's the purpose of this piece of tape that's down here. I don't know if you can hear that TV out there. I'm gonna have to go turn that down. Then you're gonna pull that down and that's, that connects to this piece of tape down here. Make sure you get a card, credit card, so that when you're doing these, you want to test every 
slot. You don't want to accidentally get done with the whole piece and you've actually sewn one of them shut. So I've taped it down to that piece. Then I took the, the double-sided tape paper off the one, the next one above that, right below that second card slot. Pull that up, just snug. And then let's just test this first card slot. Beautiful. And then we will stitch just underneath that second card slot. Uh, I know I've talked in my other videos when I did the purse pal and some other card slots, I used my scan and cut, but these I cut myself. And she gives you pretty good instructions in the pattern to be able to do that. All right, so there's the second one. And then I am gonna, that's the purpose of these, uh, this tape that you have on the side over here is to put it, and she gives you the measurement and the pattern for this right there below on the top of that first card slot. Pull your landscaping fabric down. And then let's pull that piece underneath that third slot. Pull that up. Let's just double check. is actually a little high so I am gonna move that down just a hair I think it's a little high let's see yeah that's better all right so then we're gonna uh, stitch on the, on the front just under that third card slot I'm gonna finish this one and then I'm gonna finish them off camera so you don't have to watch. But like I said, just be sure when you're doing this that you're checking every card slot as you go. So another piece of tape, I'm gonna put that on there. Pull that fabric down. Take this next piece and you finish them all the way. I'll come back when we do this top one. Yeah, let's just check it. Perfect. All right, I'll be back when I finish. All right, so I finished uh, stitching under each of my six card slots. So now I need to finish the holder for this last one. So again, I am going to put this piece of tape down here. I've used all those five pieces of tape that I had over here off camera that you couldn't see. And then that's the purpose of this piece of tape to create that slot for that last one. So you just pull that up Let's just check it. Perfect. So all of my card slots are now done. And there is no stitching this one. We will uh, actually, it'll end up getting, um, I think I'm actually gonna just cut it off right here. very secure that stuff is very sticky all right so there are our card slots with our snap so i think the next thing i'm going to do is do that little snap again i think i said this in another video is these little snap tabs are very narrow so before you put your snaps on make sure you do the top stitching
Otherwise, it's impossible to get around that snap. Again, I've done that. It's experience talking. And I'm just sewing about an eighth of an inch from the side. And I just go slow because this is going to be pretty visible. Some of her tabs are round, some of them are square, like this one. I don't really think I have a preference. This one I did cut out with my scan and cut. But you don't need a scan and cut to cut this out. It's, it's a, just a little rectangle. Part isn't going to be very visible, isn't going to be visible at all, actually. All right, then I am going to <clears throat> just trim that just a little so it's even on the bottom there. All right, and this is where my snap goes, and we'll put that on right now. I don't put a piece of Deco Light in between this because it's two layers of cork and it just doesn't need it. So I'm going to find the prettier side for it to be the top. I think this is the prettier. And that's where my flat part of my snap goes. Again, it's kind of hard to see it because it's black. Black on black. And then we will secure that and test it to make sure it works. Let's just make sure. Perfect. So there you have your snap that covers your credit cards. So here's your credit cards. And then there is another hole up here that we cut. I might have to make that just a little bigger, I do. Let me make that hole just a little bigger. I was very, uh, I didn't cut a very big, uh, to begin with on purpose. All right, so there is that, and there's the hole, and that's part of the pattern. And you just slide the top of that in there. I'm going to have to cut it a little more. Let's see. Let get it in there. There we go. All right. And then we're just going to put one row of stitches here. Uh, and there it is in the back. Pretty ingenious, isn't it? All right, so let's just secure that. credit card slot and tab will be done. So there you have it. This is really a nice feature. I did leave just a, a little gap there. I don't know if you can see that. 
um, because when you have uh, six credit cards in there, <clears throat> it'll be a little thicker. So then that's secure. So there you have it. I'm gonna take this out because I don't need that there. All right, so that is your credit card slots. And that's what it looks like on the back. But do you see how thin that landscaping fabric is? I just, I, I really like using that as opposed to anything else. Just keep in mind, don't put a flame next to this. Here, let me show you. That's what it does. I'm gonna put my smuggle on or go off. So you don't wanna put a flame next to that for anything. It burns and it gets gooey bad. All right, I've done that. And so that's lesson, uh, a good lesson for everybody if you already didn't know that, which some of you probably did. All right, be right back. All right, next we're gonna do our handle tab. And again, I've just put a piece um, of double-sided tape there down the middle. And I did draw a line down the middle and then I'm gonna fold each side into that line. And then we're gonna do some top stitching. So now I'm just going to top stitch. These ends will be visible. So just keep that in mind. You want those to look uh, pretty decent too. I think I'll just burn those while I have it off. Okay. All right, let's just top stitch. You know what? I'm going to check my bobbin real quick. I almost lost the bobbin there. I'm not gonna mess with that. It's not worth it. So uh, this bag probably only takes one full bobbin. I'm trying to use some of these ones that don't have much in them up. But any top stitching, always make sure you have enough bobbin to finish what you're top stitching. So at all, you pretty much know that. All right, so let's top stitch eighth of an inch. And I'm gonna use, uh, I think I'm gonna use a three, because this is such a small little piece.
burn those threads. I got a runaway bobbin over here. Hold on. So there you have the top stitching on. That's the handle that goes on the top of the bag. Now, before I finish putting this away, because we won't put this on until the bag is complete, I'm going to check the pattern here, because she gives you the measurements for um, where the rivets, there's four rivets that go on here. going to mark them with my uh, leather marking tool and then I'll, I'll go ahead and put the holes on here. So I had to mark those in pink. I don't know if you can even see them. Okay. I'm gonna mark those on both ends. She gives really good measurements in the pattern. And then I'm going to just cut those, uh, snip those holes. So this piece will be ready. I can even see where I put them. Huh. And I'll show you on the one I already made where, what I'm talking about here. I like how she does this, actually. All right, so that's that. But what I'm referring to on this is the handle. So these, this, these are the holes that I just did for these two rivets, and the D-ring goes in between. Cute, cute, cute. All right, so now I have my handle with my holes on either end. So that's ready. And you might notice that this is, uh, there is raw edge right here, but it's double-sided tape down. It's not going anywhere. All right, so that's that. So we've done the um, handle. We've done the credit card slots. We've done the zipper facing. And we're getting pretty close to needing our zippers and all our zipper pieces. I think next I will, whoops, don't throw the zipper away. Uh, I'm gonna do the ID holder. And we're gonna put two rows of stitches on whatever you wanna consider the top. And I think, you know, sometimes people, and I might do this today. Find my good marker. <clears throat> is just put a line on here where I want my stitches to go. This is such a small little piece that it really might be helpful just to put a little line there for you to follow. Okay, 
so that's what I did. I just did one and eighth of an inch from the top and a quarter inch away from that. So this is gonna be the top where you get in and out of. So when you put it on the piece, we're gonna stitch around this way, but not this way. Okay, so let's go ahead and just do those two rows. This is also securing the top part of the um, plastic that's in there. Am I a little obsessive? I'm a little obsessed with keeping my area clean, sorry. I'm not really an, an obsessive personality, but I like having a clean area to sew. I don't have a big area to begin with, so if it's cluttered, it's hard. Okay, so that's that top row. You could pull these threads to the back because there's nothing on there that would uh, light on fire. But uh, again, I can't get that. Oops. Could you try again? No, sorry, I don't need you. Uh, and now I'm going to do that second row of stitches. I'm using black on black, so you're not going to be able to see that one or two back stitch anyway. But if I was using a highly visible contrasting thread, I would pull stitches to the back whenever I could. Just It just looks cleaner when you do that. All right, so there's those two top stitching lines. And if there's any visible of my leather marking pen, I'm just going to wipe those off. before I move on, because you will see that if, it, if you don't get it off right away. All right, let's burn the threads if there are any poking up. All right, so there we have that. And I did leave my little center marking to put that on the inside underneath my credit card slots. All right, I think we're ready to do our zippers. Let's do our zippers, zipper pockets. Let's do this outer one first. Now for these zipper pockets, I did follow the um, size of zipper and the length of the zipper that she has in the uh, pattern. If I do the, uh, and if I remember correctly, I think I did this for the first one I made. I made the zippers a little longer. You don't have to. It's fine, what she has. I just like a little longer zipper than not. And of course, let me see here. So, where's my mark? Here's my mark, my center mark, and the center mark on my zipper. So I'm just gonna clip that in place in a few places. And then we are gonna just baste that in place. And you'll notice I have the right side of my fabric up and the right side of my zipper up because when we, and I'll show you when I get those pieces on, but right side up, right side of the zipper up. Believe me, I know it feels weird. And I just am doing a basting stitch, with a, which I do about usually a five, five or six. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have that. And then the next piece, I am gonna match my centers again. Right side of my fabric up, right side of my zipper up. You do, 
while you're doing all your center matching, just make sure that the sides of your zipper pocket are also matching. This is just a basting stitch, so I don't worry too much, but it got a little wonky there. So I'm gonna make sure it doesn't come apart. All right, so that's what you have now. So if I open my zipper, I see the right side of both of my fabrics. This is the wrong side, the wrong side, but the uh, upside, right side of my zipper. So I'm gonna lay that flat. I am gonna, I'm gonna do all three zippers at the same time. And then I'll go over and iron them because this is just a cotton quilting. But I will all iron them flat so that when I put them in the piece, they go in a little easier. So that's the outside zipper. Let's do the other two while we're at it. Match your centers. And I'm just putting a little center mark on both sides of my zipper. So I don't have to worry about that. Right side of my fabric up, right side of my zipper up. Be sure and uh, subscribe and like and write any comments. I, sh I, I just started this uh, YouTube channel channel last week. And I'm really enjoying it. I sew almost every day anyway. Um, and I have a teacher background at heart. Even though I was a nurse, I did a lot of nursing teaching. So this is kind of fun for me in my retired years. All right, so we're gonna base that in place. pattern she has you chain stitching these and I think that's a great idea I just uh, on this particular thing I just think it's easier to do it the way I'm doing it but you, you'll find what works best for you chain stitching is a great tool uh, because it, it actually saves a fair amount of time plus it saves some thread well you know threads pretty cheap Again, make sure that your pocket lines are matching up, and if you've done your center markings right, it, it'll it'll match up. And I have my zipper foot on, so that's why I'm not having to mess around with moving my zipper pull just yet. I probably will when I put it on the piece, but. For now, I'm not having to. Okay, so again, there's one of my inside zipper pockets. I'll go and iron that flat, but there's the front of the zipper, the top of the zipper, so when you open it up, you see the right side of the fabric. All right, let's do this last one, and then I'll just pause the video. You don't need to see me iron. And there's already already been a lot of really nice comments, so thank you. But if you have a constructive criticism as well, I'm happy to hear those. It won't hurt my feelings. Mm -hmm. 
I've been working hard on getting that camera angle decent so you can actually see what I'm doing. That is a bit of a challenge. Um, my husband's been a big help on that, actually. All right, so now we have all three of our zipper pockets ready to just iron flat. I'll be right back. All right, next uh, I went ahead uh, and put on my ID holder. So I just put uh, three little eighth inch pieces of double-sided tape to secure that on. She gives you the measurements in the pattern to do that. Um, and then I also put one of my zippers just in place. I haven't sewn it in there yet. Um, we'll do that together. But I thought I'd just uh, start with this. Make sure your zipper pocket is up and out of the way while we sew this ID um, pocket out, up. So we're just gonna do one row of stitches, about an eighth of an inch from starting from the top. And I am gonna back stitch a couple times. And again, this is very visible, so just go slow. I did that. I didn't look at, and this is something, uh, <laughs> something for you to keep in mind. Always check your stitch length. So I did that outer row in a five stitch length, which is fine. But I think for the inner row of stitching, I'm going to do a, a four. You won't be able to really tell on the piece. It's all in black. <laughs> black on black. Again, make sure your pocket lining is up and out of the way. And I'm just going to make sure have a credit card handy that you don't do it too tight. You want it to be snug, but not too tight. Again, we're just securing this ID this window to the bag. have it let's just see perfect and it's not loosey-goosey but it is not uh, too tight so there there's your ID window driver's license whatever you want to put in there so that's what it looks like and in the pattern she has you putting uh, rivets on all four corners and when you put those rivets on, you just want to make sure you're not putting the rivet into your um, stitching to weaken those stitches. So I'm just going to burn any little ends here. All right. So I, put, I will put those on. Um, I'll probably put that on towards the last. You don't need to see me put those on. All right. Now we are going to do this zipper. Both of these zippers are done exactly the same way. So um, she gives you some really good instructions in the video. So with this zipper pocket going up, we are gonna stitch along this bottom edge. Again, I'm gonna back stitch and I am doing a four stitch length.
And I am using my zipper foot, so I don't really need to move my, I am, I move my zipper tape out, the zipper pull out of the way, but it doesn't hurt. You're not gonna believe this. I lost the bobbin more. I ran out of my bobbin. I was trying to use all those uh, small bobbins up and I lost the bobbin. That's all right, not a big deal. Let's put a full one in so we can finish the bag with this one bobbin. I thought it sounded a little odd. Alright, so it just missed a few stitches, so. And I don't know if you noticed what I did. I lifted my presser foot up so I could see where uh, my hole was. And I went in exactly in the same spot where that hole was. So you couldn't tell. And I don't really think you can tell right there. But it missed about four or five stitches right there. And you can't tell. Beautiful thing. All right, so now, so that is in there. And if you open the zipper, you can see both right sides of the fabric. So now we are going to pull that zipper pocket lining down. And it is longer than the front piece. That's absolutely okay. And now we are going to do start in the same hole that we left on each side and stitch across the top. Okay, I went just one stitch too far and I don't like it. So I'm just going to pull that one stitch out and fix that. I don't like it. I told you I was a, just a bit of a perfectionist. I mean, you know, nothing is ever absolutely perfect, but if I can fix it, I'd rather do that. There we go. Much better. Again, make sure if you move things around that your lining pocket is going down. If you did not, um, pull them to the back. And there you have your first zipper pocket, the one that is right above the ID holder. So there you have it. And that's what it looks like in the back. So I'm going to go ahead. I'll do that one, the second one off camera. But let's go ahead and do the one on the front that has the facing. We'll do that one together. 
And this one, you want to just make sure that the pocket is splayed open. And we're just gonna do uh, a seam, um, a row of stitching all the way around the inner part of this near the zipper. Where's my top thread? There we go. And you'll notice I pull that zipper up just to get it closed as much as I can before I do that side. So there you have that. That's the outside zipper pocket. And there it looks, you can see that. But now once I pull these two pieces down, let me zip that up. They will be longer and they won't match on the bottom. That is absolutely okay. We are just going to finish that zipper. I'm actually gonna cut that excess off just so I know where they both are. I don't know about you and your scissor situation, but it took me a long time to uh, buy decent scissors because they're so expensive. So I use some old scissors forever and ever and ever. And then I bought these, these are Horn of America zippers. I mean, uh, scissors. I think this is a, I don't know if this is a nine or a 10 inch, but they are huge and they are sharp. Um, so I have these that I keep only for cutting large things and I never cut a zipper tape with this. I don't cut paper. Uh, I've given my husband in strict instructions never to use my fabric zippers for anything else in the house. Isn't that funny? And he, he knows that the wrath of Barbie will be on him if he uses these zippers. Or he'll just have to buy me a new pair, you know? What can I say? All right, so we are going to close this zipper up. So uh, you pull your fabric to the front, and then we're just gonna fold that top fabric back, and we are going to close the size of the zipper. There's not a lot of fabric on the sides. And then go across the bottom. And then go back that other side. See, I went over that zipper a couple times. All right. So I probably will end up cutting this off a little more, but I'm gonna wait until I get closer to the end. I'm just gonna cut that excess off. There's no zipper tape under there. If you are wondering if I was cutting my, uh, with my good scissors. So I will also, and I already did this, but just for my peace of mind, I always uh, burn the edge of that zipper tape. 
one last time so it doesn't fray. All right. So there you have your front outside pocket. All finished. Isn't that cute? So once I get it all done, the snaps are going to go on the inside, but it'll snap like this. You'll have your hand handle up here and then your crossbody. Cute, cute. All right, so I'm gonna finish this off camera uh, just because the length of this video is getting long, and then, uh, but it's exactly the same way. So here's my zipper pocket. And I'm gonna put some double-sided tape and get that on there really good and even. And then I will flip the lining pocket up do one row of stitches just across the bottom. Then I will flip the whole thing down and stitch up and across the top. So it's the exact same thing, it's just only in reverse. All right, I'll be right back. All right, so I have both of my zippers in place and stitched all on all four sides of the zipper. So there you can see on the back. So this one, um, you can see, I did not do the bottom yet on either one. Again, always check to make sure you didn't close your zipper pocket. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, uh, I'm just gonna clip both of these out of the way and I'm gonna put my uh, magnetic snaps on. So whichever side you have your snaps on, just make sure that you put either the female on one side and both males on the other. It doesn't really matter how you do it. Just make sure that they're matching. Again, it's not the end of the world if you don't, but it, it just would look better that way. All right, so I have a tiny piece of Decabelle Heavy that I am putting. I'm gonna put on this end, I'm gonna put, let me find my hole here. I'm gonna put my female ends on this side of the interior closure. And I actually make my, uh, I'm using magnetic rivets, snap rivets, and I make my holes just a tiny bit smaller than the actual rivet. And I do that on purpose just so they're it gives it a little more uh, durability. All right. And what? There it is. Whew. You certainly don't have to use rivet magnetic snaps. You can use the ones with the prongs. This is still the time that you would want to put those on. So I'm gonna go over and secure those and I'll be right back. All right, so I've secured my magnetic snaps. So here's the male end on this side. That's what it looks like from the back. This is smooth, so I'm not gonna, I don't need to put a piece of tape over that. And then there's the female end, same thing. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to, and I probably goofed, I shouldn't have probably cut off the excess here. It's not gonna be a big deal at all. I'll still have a really good pocket. Um, I left this one. Um, we're gonna do a basting stitch all the way around this, and then we will even off our bottoms. So again, I'm just gonna go up to about five a little bit more than a five, and baste all the way around that. Just an eighth of an inch. Make sure you have your pockets where they're supposed to be. Gorgeous. 
And this closes up the bottom of the zipper pockets as well. And it would have closed up my sides if I had left it alone. Didn't get ahead of myself. All right. No big mistake. Sometimes mistakes are big, but this one is not. All right, so then we have our basting stitch. So now we will just trim this off so it meets the end of that cork. I like to interface my zipper pockets most of the time. I think it just helps them last a little longer. And since there really is no other interfacing in this entire bag, because I'm using cork on the inside and the outside, I thought it would be nice to have just a little more uh, durability on the inside of those pockets. All right, so there you have your actually completed inside piece. You have your zippers. One's going this way and one's going that way. So, and here's your ID holder. Let me put a little uh, tag in there so you can see it easier. It's really hard to see. So my, um, my cards are just a little too big. They're bigger than an ID, which is all right. And uh, just another little tip. Some people do put a little hole here so that you can easily slide things in and out. That's an actually a great idea, and I probably will do that on my next one. So there's that, and then you have your zipper pocket, and it is closed up now. And on this side, you have your um, credit card slots and another is finished zipper pocket. So when we get the front piece on, which we're going to do here in a second, and it'll go like this and it snaps. I would just, before you put a whole thing together, just double check and make sure that looks pretty good when you get those snaps on. And it does. It's beautiful. So the last thing we're going to do is put right sides together. And you know what? We have to leave one of these zipper pockets open to turn. And I think it's this outer one. Let me just double check that. Because that's how you turn the entire bag. Mm -hmm. Yep. No big deal. I'll just open that up on the bottom there. I was just thinking as I was going to put the two uh, front pieces, to, the front and back pieces together, I'm like, how are we going to turn this? Oh, yeah. I forgot, we have to leave the turning hole. Isn't it a beautiful thing that you're seeing on my boobers? It's just a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't really mind. I'm human, I make mistakes. And like I said many times on these videos, Mistakes are mostly fixable, especially in sewing. Get all that extra thread off of there. And then we're gonna fold these up just like you did in another video. Um, so that when we do go to finish it, it's, um, I'll probably go iron this real quick as well, just so it's up and out of the way. Mm. 
Okay, so you can see that is up and out of our, um, I might just pin this up as well. Just so it's, uh, let me get one of my other clips. just so it's out of our seam allowance. I don't want to accidentally run over a clip. All right, and then you will, so this is the outside. I, I'm, I'm just gonna leave that open about half. And then we will put our um, outside face down with our inside. And I believe she, th she suggests putting the outside zipper pocket over the credit card slot. Let's just look. I want to do what she says. I don't think it really matters, but um, let's do what she says. Yes. Okay. So then we will just clip these all the way around. Right sides together and I have my outside zipper pocket over my credit card slots. And this is where, where those centers that you clipped on the, at the very beginning uh, come in handy. So I think I'll just go do those all the way around. You don't need to watch me clip. So I will pause the video and come back when I have everything all clipped. All right, so I've got it all clipped all the way around. I've got my zipper pocket up and out of the way and out of my seam allowance. And I am going to stitch. It really doesn't matter which side you stitch from, but because my basting stitch is on this side, I'm gonna do it from, from this side. Use the seam allowance that she provides you in the pattern. And we are almost done. I am gonna do about a four stitch line. So when you have, um, oh man, I need to get my, uh, those interior zipper pulls, I need to, you just want to make sure they're out of your way. You don't want to go over those zipper pulls. So there's a pretty good seam allowance. So if, you know, I really like the larger seam allowance when you're putting things together because then it really helps a little forgiving on any mistakes you've made while cutting it out. Just feeling that I'm not gonna go over anything I shouldn't. So here again, Let's push that zipper pull out of the way. There we go. She places the magnetic snaps far enough away that it's not uh, getting in the way of your um, stitching here. So you can do it with a regular, you don't have to have a zipper front. I leave my zipper foot on almost all the time. This machine has a walking foot. And it depends on the application that I'm sewing. I, I will sometimes put that back on, but I really like this zipper foot. All right, so there we have our stitching. It's kind of hard to see black all the way around. 
and we are gonna trim that down to about a quarter of an inch. And that's where it's really nice to use these big old ass scissors. And because I'm using cork, I'm not gonna use my pinking shears. But if I had, um, some people do cotton for the outside of this, I would probably use my pinking shears. Just to keep, help it keep from any excess fraying. I hate cutting all that pretty cork off. I know that sounds silly, but. All right, let's see what we got. I didn't trim this, did I? Hmm. There we go. All right, let's turn it. Open that zipper, grab it. Grab the other end and take your time on this. This is, again, it really depends on what fabrics you use to do this. This cork shouldn't be too hard to turn. You know, I was just thinking it would have been pretty to do black on the outside and pink cork on the inside. That would have been really pretty. So be careful too, because you don't want to rip any of your zipper pocket when you're pulling everything through. So just go slow. Some people do struggle with this birthing of bags because it's hard on your hands. Thankfully, I have pretty strong hands from all those years and years of nursing. Oh, goodness, this is so cute. This is the first thing I've made with this black and silver cork. Very, very pretty. Again, you can use your fingers or any of those poking tools for corners. My nails are pretty short, so I can just use my fingers. Okay. Let's put that in there for a minute and just see what this looks like. So, obviously, we'll have to do some flattening of it, but, oh, my gosh, isn't that cute? So, this is your, obviously, your front. That's going to be the back, and then when you open it, you've got your ID, and then you've got your credit card slots on this side with a full zipper pocket on each end. And um, I don't know if you guys noticed, but all my zipper pulls have plastic on them. I leave that on there until I'm, I've sold it and I'm ready to ship it. That, it just protects those a little bit. So I am going to just work on this a little bit to get it nice and flat. And then we will, we can actually just do that now. Close up this zipper pocket, pull it out, and bend it up. I didn't, I didn't keep it bent, so it's coming apart, but that's all right. You then need to be pretty. It's inside the pocket.
So we're just bending those raw edges together and we'll just do a nice little top stitch. And, you know, I'm using black thread. I've used black thread the whole time. I have uh, some white thread on my domestic machine back there. Cream, white. I think I'll do that. I'll go back there and um, close this off with that, that uh, thread so you really can't see it. So I'll be right back and then we will uh, put the uh, top handle on with our rivets and our D-rings, and then we're going to be done. So I'll be right back. All right, so there's the finished pocket. So I just think that looks better with uh, a matching thread as opposed to black thread. So we're just going to punch that back down inside, get that nice and even on the inside. No humps and bumps in there. So there's the outside. I consider that the front and the back on the inside. It's a beautiful thing. All right, let's do this uh, top piece and we need our rivets. And we need some kind of a marking tool. These rivets go all the way through the bag. So you want a decent uh, length of a ribbon. I'm just going to clip this so everything's real nice and flat while I'm putting this uh, top handle on. Okay. All right, so if you remember, we did our handle and we put uh, two holes on either side. Make sure that when you're putting this on, that you're using the side that doesn't have the raw edges going up. So that would be this side. You can see that. Okay. And I may have to go over, so I'm not sure I can get in there with my um, leather hole punch. So I may have to So you just want this to be pretty centered on the top. All right. And it ends up being about a half inch. Should give you the measurements in the pattern, but it's about a half inch from each end. So there is just an ever so slightly poop in there. And then what we want to do is mark our holes because we're going to put holes down. You know, I... I I'm a little obsessive. I gotta make sure I'm getting this in the center. I can't hang if it wouldn't end up being in the center. So I'm just gonna measure. Okay, I feel better about that. Gonna put a little mark there for the center on this side. You're seeing a little bit of the obsession, compulsion in me to get things centered. Out of the way. Okay. 
Okay, I feel bad about that. And then half inch. All right. So there you can see the center. And let me put it over here. The center and um, a half inch in on each side. Then all I need to do is I'm going to line my strap up there and I'm going to, on the holes that I already have, oops, on the holes I already have on the strap, oh, I am so sorry. I hit you with my head. I'm okay, though. <laughs> um, I'm going to just put a hole, my marking pen, all the way through those holes so that I know where they are. Because this bag already has silver on it, it's really kind of hard to tell. Where those are, <laughs> once I mark them, I should probably put... Uh, I can see them, okay. So now I'm just going to go over to my hole punch. It'll just take me a minute. I'm not going to stop the video. And I'm going to put the holes in that all the way through to the interior. I know it feels kind of crazy, doesn't it? So there's four rivets. You could actually use your Japanese uh, hole punch for this as well. I didn't think about that until right this second. So now I've got those holes and uh, they went through. For the most part, I think I need to clean that up just a bit. I'm sorry for all of the noise. That was very noisy. So I'm just using a little whole auger just to make sure I got them all the way through. And if I didn't, it helps me. There we go. All right, let's put our, you also need your D-rings. Don't forget your D-rings. If you do, you're gonna regret it. So I've got one D-ring. And it goes in between your rivets. On both sides. Okay, let's just do this side. So if you can see, I've got my two rivets there. And I've got my D-ring in between them. Very ingenious how she does this. Okay. It's a little clumsy getting the... Uh, Keeping your D-ring out of the way while you put the rivets in. All right, there's my caps. Okay. All right, before we snap that, let's just make sure, yep, my D-ring's right there. All right, same thing on the other side. These are tiny little things. All right, got one rivet in. I'm gonna put my D-ring on. I'm gonna put my other rivet in. Actually, it might be easier if I do this one at a time. I'll do the inner one first. Don't need to worry about my ring. There we go. Now, put your ring, this, that's a lot easier. So, practice makes perfect your other rivet on. Make sure your D-ring is in the middle there. 
pull that through. All right, so that's what it looks from the inside. You got four rivets there. And then on the outside, before you press those rivets, make sure that your D-rings in between those rivets. All right, I'm gonna go press that and I'll be right back. All right, so I have my hand wand. Isn't that just so cute? So if you don't want to use your crossbody step, if you want to just grab it and go real quick, you can grab that. Or if you don't want to use it, it's really just there out of the way. And then you can uh, attach your crossbody strap. To these D-rings. Make it as long or short as you'd like. And there you go. Snap your magnetic snap. And there you have it. So it could be a shoulder strap, it could be a crossbody strap, almost anything you'd like. I'll stand up and put it on. But moving this camera is very tenuous, so I'll do that. I'll stop the video and do that. Now, I, in the in the uh, pattern, she does not have you top stitching. And depending on your material, you certainly could. I did not, on this one, do any top stitching, and I really don't think it needs it. And I don't think this cork needs it either. I will probably clip this all the way around just to get it uh, in a little better um, memory of being flat. But it really doesn't need it. So there's your credit card slots. Your zipper pocket. And one zipper pocket goes one way and one goes the other way. And then you have your outside zipper pocket. So there's a lot of room in this pattern. And you could easily put a phone in this zipper pocket. My, uh, If I wasn't videotaping with my phone, I could go get my husband's before I um, do the next step. And you could easily put that in there. Cute, cute, cute. All right, I'll be back and show you the final on. All right, here's the finished bag. Don't mind my apron. I have a, I was cooking this morning and I have my apron on, so don't mind that. So here's the bag. And here it's not. I mean, it is so cute. It's not tiny, but it's a good size. I did steal my husband's phone. So it fits in there. This is an iPhone 14. It's snug getting in there, but it fits fine. And then if you want to just get in your ID, your zipper pocket, and then you just turn it over and you got your, your credit card slots and another pocket. How cute is that? And again, this is an adjustable strap. So if you're taller than me, I'm about 5'4", um, it goes down more. But if you don't want to use the strap and you just want to take it by the handle, all you do is just take your straps off and then you can just carry it with a handle. Or you can just carry it as a clutch. So either way, very, very nice pattern by Lens Handmade. And I'll link all the uh, links in the description. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye.